whether that was it was planned to have a phased approach, um, particularly the difference between the first and the second half, or whether that was a case of adjusting to the ebb and flow of the game. And do you come out with the feeling, I think Arsenal underperformed their XG again, that maybe Arsenal didn't make the most of their chances as well today? It's a lot of questions in that question, Tim. <laughs> but, yeah, but I'm trying to, to answer them correctly. Yeah, I, I think you're right in a game like this that there are different phases in the game, and I think that's part of what makes a game like this so stimulating. Um, I hope it's stimulating as a, as a player. It's certainly stimulating as a coach, and I hope for you guys that, that watch the game as well that it is, because that means it gets determined by so small margins. Um, but I think you could see we had a clear plan throughout the game on how we're going to play out from their pressure, which I think is one of Manchester City's really strong points. And I think we did that overall incredibly well, um, again against them. And we create a lot of opportunity as a result of being really good in our build-up. Um, I think what pleases me a lot is that we are turning over the ball in build-up, I think maybe 30 or 40 seconds before Frida scores the first goal. And I think it really shows what we are about as a team, that we don't start to question if that's the right way to try and do. We do small adjustments in order to be successful. And then just 30 seconds after, we can be successful with the same pattern. But now we're getting out and the, the result, there is a goal. Um, I think we were not good enough to sustain that tax in the first half. Uh, and I don't think we got our structure right there. So that was more of an adjustment during the game. So we got a better structure in our sustained attacks. I thought that was improved in the second half. Then it comes into sort of the phases in press. And yes, there we varied a little bit more being like, where we're in a mid block, where we're in a higher, um, higher pressure, um, where we lower and, and looking for transition opportunities. And I think that's where we were as most flexible in the game trying to create different pictures and being without the ball still being able to be in control as an idea and controlling the spaces where we allow them to have the ball and understanding when we want the ball where we wanted to to hurt them then it comes to the question about xg and i think you're right in that if we zoom out i think we are the team with the better chances um, and especially if you consider the goal that we got ruled out for offside, if that's now an onside, that would have increased uh, both goal tally and XG uh, with, with a lot. But they also have some chances in, in the game. And I think we once again shows an incredible morale as a team coming in a difficult situation, being 2-1 two win, two one down. And after that second goal they score, I think we have a tough momentum against us for a five, 10 minute period. But we managed to turn that around. We're changing the way we press a little bit. We're changing some personnel. And once again, we can start creating chances and we see the importance of having a really strong squad, not only a starting 11, but the finishing 11. And I don't think there is a coincidence that two of our game changes are directly involved in that second goal. Um, and then I think there is two teams that goes for the three points in the end. I don't think any team is really content with having a point, uh, and I think that's the way it should be. And a shorter question this time, I promise. I feel like one of the details from the second half was the wider players coming in a little bit, um, but also I wanted to ask you about Rosa Kafaji. You played her off the left when she came on, which you know I think we think of her more as a central player, but you move Mariola inside, and that's where the equaliser comes from. What, what was it that made you do that? I think it comes down to qualities uh, that, that you want to utilise at, at the time. I think Rosa can play both on the, as a wide forward. She can play as a 9, she can play as a 10. Uh, you get really good attacking runs from Rosa. She's a good finisher. She's a great 1v1 player. And uh, sometimes in games that's easier to utilise those qualities on the, on the side. Um, and I think a lot of times when you are looking at when we are winning the ball and it comes in transition moments against Manchester City, it's our wingers that will end up coming in the ball and being in these decisive moments. And I thought that was really important to try and keep fresh legs 
as a part of the game plan on the wingers because those are going to be the in, in the most deciding moments on, in the game and that was part of the plan of playing then both Rose and Beth as, as wingers because they're going to have the freshest legs at, at that time. Cheers Tim. Um, hi, Travis. Um, can I just first ask about Leah Williamson? You know, she's in the concussion protocol. Just how close was she to playing today and what's her state at the moment for Thursday? Not close to play today. In a concussion protocol, um, I have to be guided by, by our medical team when she can return to play. Um, thank you. And can I also ask um, about why you made a change up front in the start of 11 with Black Stinius coming in for Russo? Um, as we know, Stine has got a very good record against City, but kind of what, was, what was the thinking behind that change? Well, I, I think the thinking about that change was to knowing that in the first half that we knew it going to be spacing behind them both when we win the ball against them because we were a little bit lower in our approach defending but also when we are playing out of their high pressure that that's going to be moments to go in behind and um, I think you could see that in the first half that that Stina was coming to a number of opportunities and had a number of good runs uh, and, and that was the reason why I thought it was good to start her and then when legs got a little bit more tired, then we got on Alessia. And what was going through your mind when Viv got her equaliser? Um, because it was her? Yeah. Nothing. It's, it's, it's a player scoring a goal against us. For, for me, it doesn't make any difference. Thanks, Kate. Emma. Hey, Jonas, you sort of touched on the second City goal and the fact you've had to show a lot of resilience to come back from it. Wondered did it make it even tougher throughout the 90 minutes, the timing of, of City's goals, the first one coming in the second half, the second half time, and that second one coming when you were kind of on top and then they scored that and then had that period where they dominated a little bit? Yeah, goal changes football matches um, to your point. Of course it does, but I think, again, it's so important to, to show the resilience in, in these moments and understanding that when you're playing against another top team, momentum are going to shift during the game as well. And I think we're in a tough period after we concede the second goal. And um, with a combination of hard work and good defending play, we managed to not concede the third. And that gives us the, the foothold that we need to come back into, into the game. But it's so important to manage those periods as a football team. Thank you. Hi, Hi Jonas. Um, Gareth, when he was in here, described it as like a final. And you said it was really stimulating. I was just wondering. From a coach's perspective, how is it actually emotionally when you're when you're on the touchline when you're that close to it and everything's just kind of happening around you? How do you actually feel emotionally in those moments? Um, it, it, that is a very good question. I I have to say that sometimes in, in games I can feel nervous. I think that's that's human. But these games here. There's no nervousness whatsoever because I think you you're just so switched on. You just you can't allow yourself to be nervous one second in in those games. It's constantly looking at information, taking decisions, understanding what part of the game plan we are going to to execute at at the right moment, being good in the communication, making sure that we communicate things in a in the right way, in a positive way, in a clear way to the to the players. So I think it's. It's really a state of alertness when you when you're there. Then after you become tired, uh, I think it's, you you probably feel that you just, you stimulated your brain a lot, but you haven't done any real physical work. Um, so I definitely need think that I need to put on the the running shoes and and go for a run later today. I was going to ask. I'm not sure if you've switched off already yet, but obviously it's a big day for Arsenal in general. So are you going to be able to? Managed to watch the men's game uh, against City as well in about an hour's time. I certainly hope so, because it, or I certainly hope so, um, because it's it's a great football game. Not only as an Arsenal supporter, uh, I mean, I think the whole world is going to watch that game. It's two of the best teams globally that has had so many interesting tactical battles over the years. I think we're all looking forward with excitement to see that game. Uh, I 
I think she had a very solid game for us. Um, I think it's a great piece of skill on the second goal that we score, uh, lifting the ball over and, and setting up that, that situation for us. Uh, I think Steph Catley not being available, I think you could see how reliable Katie, Katie is and, and has been for us and constantly being able to put in big shifts. Thanks for being Emily. Um, Linus, when we were in the US, we talked a little bit about the phases that you go through with a team and you kind of said at this point in the season you wanted to be in that kind of performing, if not the kind of the normal stage. And I'm just curious whether um, that's kind of where your assessment is of, of the team currently, whether you're still ironing some of those the communication things out at the minute. Um, I, I think realistically you are doing that because we still haven't had that much time together. So, so of course we're still in that process of constantly finding out what, what's going to work best for us. I think Hecken was a prime example of that. I really thought that was a step backwards for us as, as a team performing. But sometimes you, how hard it is to do that, sometimes that's what's necessary. To, to have a performance like that because it becomes so clear to everyone what we need to do differently mm -hmm. and what demands we need to have on each other to not make that happen again. And I think that's what defines a great team. It's the ability to learn. Mm -hmm. It's the ability to move, move forward and put things past you and take the necessary lessons from that performance. Uh, so <clears throat> while I would hope that we just would be in a performing stage and, and everything just just flows. Um, I think we are at a great learning stage and we're going towards the performing stage. Thanks, Emily. Last one from you, Sandra. Uh, hi, Ines. Um, just you mentioned game changes earlier, and just how important is it to have a game changer with the experience of someone like Beth Mead, um, you know, just bringing what she does, particularly in high stakes, high pressure moments, but also seeing how she's now working with someone like Rosa Cafford Jr. and adjusting to the side? I think it's so important. I think it's important if we're going to utilize the squad to its full potential. Sometimes as a player, you're going to be a starting player. Sometimes you're going to be an impact player or a game changer. And what you own to the squad is that you do your very best in either one of those roles. And sometimes it's tough on the players that they want to start games. Of course they want to do that. And to have to accept that today you're going to be a, be a game changer and you're going to have an impact coming on from the from the bench and I think that's what's so great working with these players that yes of course they're disappointed not starting games but they do understand what they're going to bring to the team and they do that fully with 100% quality and if we can keep that we're a very very strong football team. Awesome, we'll leave it there guys. Thank you, Thank you guys.